aboard every Imperial void ship of any note. A navigator can be found. An aged merchant freighter might possess only one, where a grand cruiser can host dozens, but they will always be there. Some navigators may claim a position of authority on the ship's bridge beside the captain, while others will never leave their exclusive sanctum. They may walk amongst the crew or forever stand apart, but even if they are never seen, they are always felt. For whatever else they might be, navigators are mutants, and their presence is as inimical to the human spirit as anything else that has ever been touched by the powers of the warp. That such creatures most associated with witchery and murderous power are allowed free reign aboard even the mightiest Imperial warship is a testament to their absolute necessity. For without the navigators, extended warp travel would be impossible and the Imperium of Man would cease to exist. And this is their true power. For a navigator is far more than just a means to cruise the dangerous current of the warp. They are a direct link to an ancient aristocracy that has charted the course of mankind since before the Imperium itself. They are the representatives of the Navis Nobilitae. The emergence of the Navigator gene across the human species remains one of the great, lingering mysteries from the long-forgotten Dark Age of Technology. Even now, it cannot be said with any certainty whether this mutation was the deliberate, desired outcome of some biotechnical program, the natural progression of human evolution, or perhaps even the result of the Emperor's intervention. Whatever the case, the first generation of navigators was believed to have been born sometime between the 12th and 22nd millennium. Sources vary wildly on this, but all agree that the first navigators within the human species roughly coincided with the initial warp drives and geller fields that made faster-than-light travel possible. Their existence provided to mankind the ability to directly perceive the warp, and the consequences of this were far-reaching. Though possessing a great variety of almost supernatural powers, the navigators were soon discovered to be of greatest use when assigned aboard starships. Warp travel, always hazardous even in the best of circumstances, was made significantly more reliable through the talents of a navigator, and they quickly became essential personnel aboard every ship that could afford to hire them. As longer and longer jumps were made across the warp, the pace of galactic discovery and colonization increased exponentially. Mankind's scattered dominions were linked, and the foundation of a true interstellar civilization was laid. It was into this dynamic and optimistic era that the first Navigator dynasties almost certainly emerged. Individual Navigators, and eventually their offspring, created viable bloodlines, and these growing houses separated themselves from the national or corporate powers that had sought to profit from their abilities. With a relentless demand for their services, the newly independent Navigator families were able to amass enormous influence and power. The idea that they constituted a new kind of nobility was also fermented in this time. The Navigator dynasties were no less immune to the disastrous consequences of the Age of Strife than any other human institution. Entire houses were destroyed, disappeared, corrupted, or transformed utterly, while many more simply lost the ability to produce viable offspring with the Navigator gene. In some scattered territories across the galaxy where interstellar civilization had managed to survive, navigators had retained their privileged position. But in others, they were hunted down and forced to conceal their abilities to survive. Thousands more were left to wander the galaxy, offering their services to whatever ships were still plying the ravaged star lanes. It is assumed that the Emperor came into contact with several navigator houses during the Unification Wars likely those that had continued to maintain a presence on Terra, or the nomadic clans that periodically arrived in the solar system to bring news of the wider galaxy. How the Emperor won them to his cause can only be speculated, though the benefits of a stable interstellar empire to the Navigator Houses must have been obvious. The Navigators, however, were hardly without leverage. Since the Dark Age of Technology, the warp had grown even more violent and unpredictable. Traveling without a navigator, once merely extremely dangerous, was now entirely fatal. 
The Navis Nobilite was the result of whatever ancient agreements were made between the Emperor and the Navigators. A new institution, forever binding the Navigator houses to the service of the Imperium. 10,000 years later, it remains steadfast and eternal in its commitments. In an era when so many other Imperial institutions have been transformed beyond all recognition. The role of the Navis Nobilite within the greater hierarchy of the Imperium is a complex one, deeply affected by the ponderous weight of tradition, precedence, and courtly decorum. But the obligations and responsibilities of the institution are largely straightforward. Its key function is to oversee the continued preservation and development of the Navigator Gene, and to ensure that trained navigators are made available to the Imperium wherever they are required. In exchange, the individual houses that make up that nobility are granted special dispensation to see their own internal affairs and governance. And perhaps most importantly, individual navigators are protected from the persecution typically leveled against mutants by the order of the Emperor himself. It is in the interest of the Navis Nobilite to present itself as a unified institution in much the same fashion as the Adeptus Administratum or Astronomica. But in its function, the organization is among the most decentralized within the Imperium of Man. The Navis Nobilite possesses very little resources or power inherent to itself, and is instead mostly a framework that allows for the disparate navigator houses to work together and be represented. It is within these houses that the true potential of the Navis Nobilite is found. Free from most forms of Imperial oversight, Navigator Houses govern themselves in whatever manner they see fit. As a consequence, they vary significantly in their scale and in their form. Houses might resemble corporate entities, military institutions, or be far more esoteric in the fulfillment of their obligations. There is typically a single matriarch or patriarch, however, sometimes going by the title of Novator. They are the figurative and sometimes literal mother and father of the dynasty, responsible for managing its affairs and managing its fortunes. Though the Novator guides the destiny of the House, it is the Elders that select the Novators. These are ancient and withered creatures, consigned to luxurious isolation, so as to spare the rest of the family the sight of their gruesome and unsightly mutations. Collectively, the Houses also compete with one another to select a Patanova the highest representative of the Navis Nobilite, above even the Novators. Upon their appointment, the Patanova undergoes a dramatic transformation, growing stronger in their use of the Third Eye, and eventually empowering every other navigator in the galaxy. The Patanova's palace is located within the Navigator's Quarter on Holy Terra, an immense district that has been given over entirely to the Navis Nobilite. It is impossible to know precisely how many houses operate under the framework of the Navis Nobilite, as every decade, the Navigator Gene flourishes in some dynasties and withers in others. New houses rise to a place of prominence, while others are dissolved or reformed. Yet while an accurate catalogue is impossible, houses are usually grouped into four broad categories, representative of their operations, standing, or unique mutations. Magisterial houses are some of the more traditional within the Navis Nobilite, and in many cases claim an honored and storied lineage dating back to the Unification Wars. The trappings of nobility and courtly behavior are expressed most acutely within these dynasties, as many of their traditions, customs, and practices have been observed for millennia. Magisterial houses are considered to have perfected the navigator arts, and their bloodlines are generally less susceptible to mutation or decline. A magisterial house, even a minor one, is extraordinarily politically connected. Its representatives, diplomats, and power brokers are socially skilled, highly educated, and will often be found in the grandest circles of imperial society. Though no exact criteria exists that might define what constitutes a magisterial house and separates them from the others. The most conspicuous element is an estate within the Navigator's Quarter on Terra. Any dynasty that can maintain a presence within it has reached the apex of the Imperium's political elite. Nomadic houses, by contrast, have severed most of their ties with the Imperium's aristocratic pageantry. They are not bound to a single planet, 
star system, or even sector, but are instead perpetually on the move aboard a house-owned void ship or fleet. They have immersed themselves wholly in their crafts, and their knowledge of astro-navigation is considered second to none. Yet, they are also more willing to experiment with the navigator gene, and more likely to experience mutations, both positive and negative. Together, they represent many of the newer lineages that have emerged over the millennia, with a meager connection to the ancient dynasties, if any such link exists at all. A shrouded house is a dynasty in decline. A multitude of factors might have accounted for this, but regardless, it is a house that has opted to move their base of power to an imperial backwater, or to the edge of known space. While it may not be the norm, shrouded houses can possess enormous wealth and power, but for whatever reason, they have lost their exalted position among the Navis nobility. Most, however, are merely the victim of the unstable navigator gene, and no longer able to produce viable candidates. Whether the house disappears fully from the galaxy, or attempts to reassert itself, will depend on each dynasty, but more than a few have used their loss in standing to become more cunning and opportunistic. The last major type of house is distinguished by its complete exclusion from the Navis nobility. These are the Renegade Houses, dynasties that have rejected the traditions of the Imperium and been forced out as a result. Almost anything can make a house turn Renegade, and while some might have fallen into the service of heretics or Xenos, just as many continue to serve the Imperium, albeit in a way judged obscene or heretical by the nobility. Renegade houses are often found in the most dangerous regions of the galaxy, places where the demand for a navigator outstrips any concern over where they might have come from. Every navigator house is of obscene importance to the Imperium of Man. That interstellar travel would be impossible without them is no exaggeration, and their essential nature has attracted enormous influence, wealth, and power. Even the lowliest shrouded house will likely possess riches and significance beyond the wildest dreams of the average Imperial citizen, but it is the great houses of the Navis nobility that are truly without comparison. The largest and most ancient dynasties are empires unto themselves. Each are enormous webs of thousands of navigator families, connected through marriage, alliances, money, favors, or however else a soul might be convinced to enter the service of another. Their progeny serve aboard tens of thousands of Imperial void ships, have gained monopolies across entire sectors, and the scale of the payment rendered by the Imperium for their services is almost unimaginable. But for the great houses of the Navis nobility, the fulfillment of their obligation to the Imperium is merely the start. The wealth brought into a house by its navigators is quickly reinvested elsewhere, all part of the critical task of amassing even more. Planetary governors, rogue traders, and inquisitors, even formal representatives of the Adeptus Mechanicus or Ministorum, all have found eager backers or investors within the Navis nobility. It is likely no exaggeration to state that every ambitious undertaking of suitable size to ever have been launched by the Imperium was in some way at least partially funded by an ambitious navigator house. Repayment for such investments comes in a multitude of forms, and for the navigator houses, influence and favors are more often more important than money. A major house might develop a close relationship with any institution within the Imperium, though connections to the Adeptus Astartes, Imperial Navy, and rogue traders are particularly valuable. The ultimate prize, however, is for a house to acquire an exclusive charter to provide navigators to an entire Imperial formation or aboard even a single black ship of the Astra Telepathica. Though rarely given, were a house to ever negotiate such an arrangement, it would instantly become one of the most powerful in the galaxy. Competition amongst the navigator houses for exclusive charters and other benefits can at times lead to violent confrontations and even full-scale wars. These usually take the form of trade wars, which, true to navigator custom, are declared formally and resolved by every means available to the house. Only in some cases will there be any open warfare. Very few dynasties maintain their own armies or navies beyond a small personal guard and flotilla. 
Instead, the fighting is usually restricted to espionage and covert action. Though the code of conduct governing trade wars is intended to limit the damage such conflicts cause, it is often ignored, especially when the stakes of the conflict are raised. A major house involved in a trade war has the right to call forth any vassal houses it might possess, and when this is done, it can easily set off a cascade reaction as more and more alliances become involved. Houses likewise might call in favors from friendly elements of the Imperium's military forces, and if this is done by both sides, what started as a trade war can escalate into a civil war, devastating large parts of the Imperium. In the most dire of circumstances, houses have even been known to hire mercenary armies, sometimes using Xeno species, such as orcs or Kroot. Such an act, if discovered, would destroy any house involved in it, so it is typically only utilized through intermediaries. In most cases, the houses prefer to avoid such conflicts, and formal grievances are settled within navigator duels instead. These secretive contests of physical and mental strength test the resolve of each navigator as they unleash the full powers of their third eye. The duels are rarely fatal. Far too important is the life of a navigator, but they can have lasting repercussions for a house, as sure as any war. Entire navigator empires have been built on a single duel, held on some lonely forgotten hive spire. But despite the astonishing capabilities of the great houses, they rarely maintain a visible presence throughout all their affairs. In most cases, they are silent partners, preferring the direct administration of their assets be left to others. Navigator families typically hold sizable stakes in trading stations, industrial centers, starports, and planetary infrastructure with little if any evidence. Often, their involvement is carefully hidden, limited to a single line on a ledger or a mute servitor observer. Billions across the Imperium will spend their lives in the indirect service of a Navigator dynasty, though few will ever realize it. But even the most powerful Navigator houses in the galaxy are constantly reminded that their position is a tenuous one. To endure, they must navigate not only their temperamental genetics and the shifting currents of the warp, but the political intrigue that permeates the Imperium's elite. The leeway afforded to the Navigator houses is an enormous advantage, but when pressed too far, risks the destruction of the entire Navis Nobilite. The relationship between the Navis Nobilite and the Greater Imperium is by every official account a cordial one. But the amicable rhetoric hides one of the most dangerous games played at the highest level of power. Every Navigator dynasty is aware of the Imperium's need for them, and eager to exploit this to the fullest extent. Unless a house directly collaborates with renegades or Xenos hostile to the Imperium, even their most brazen and outrageous acts of corruption are unlikely to be investigated. This is doubly so when the house in question has prominent ties to an Astartes chapter, battle fleet, or some other elite Imperial institution. Even the Adeptus Arbites and Inquisition will hesitate before pursuing any case related to the Navigators. But the Imperium can only be pushed so far. While the bargaining power of the Navis Nobilite is formidable, their essential nature cuts both ways. The Imperium of Man will not suffer any interruption to its supply of navigators, and if the Houses ever attempted any action that might risk this, the Imperial response would be overwhelming. Though none but the High Lords of Terra can say for sure, there is almost certainly a vast contingency in place, an operation of dizzying scope, that would see the Navigator Houses eradicated were they ever to overplay their hand. Though whether the Imperium would be able to maintain the Navigator gene without the collective knowledge of the Houses places the success of such a plan into doubt. None within the Navis Nobilite are willing to test Imperial resolve, however. It is common practice to deal with any potential problems internally, well before they might ever come to the attention of the Imperium. And in cases of heresy, or some equally serious crime the Imperium cannot ignore, the Navis Nobilite is expeditious in its assistance. Even during the Era Indomitus, as the galaxy continues to reel from the destruction of Cadia and the spread of the Great Rift across the galaxy, the Navis Nobilite endures as it always has. 
no loyal Imperial official would describe them as anything other than a glorious and esteemed organization, loyal to the Imperium and stalwart in their faith. But in a time when many buried secrets have been brought back into the light, comes a particular danger to the Navis Nobilite. It is said somewhere within the Imperial Vaults on Terra, correspondence from the Emperor himself might be found. Whatever words these pages carry are restricted, never to be uttered again. But certain passages, were they ever to be exposed, would destroy the foundation of the Navigators and decimate the Imperium itself. The Emperor, it is rumored, considered the Navigators nothing more than a useful tool, one to be discarded like the Thunder Warriors before, the moment the need for them expired. A great plan was in the works, one that would only be completed when the body of the last Navigator was thrown atop a charnel pit and the gene they carried was erased. Yet the fires of the heresy left the work of the Emperor unfinished. Perhaps the great houses of the Navigators knew this. Perhaps they had their own great plan. The Templin Institute investigates the nations, factions, and organizations of alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards. 